Hi folks, uh, Navid here from Edinburgh and the Dentist. I uh, hope you, you've had a productive week uh, given the circumstances we are in uh, at the moment. Welcome back to the second week of the trauma mini lectures. As you may recall, we covered fractured injuries a couple of weeks ago, and this week we will go through luxations. The aim is to highlight the current guidance for managing the various forms of dental trauma in order to improve, maximize the chance of success um, and overall tooth retention. The learning outcomes include the principles for the assessment of a traumatic dental injury, so to be able to diagnose common luxation injuries and displacements using clinical and radiographic signs and to implement the appropriate management and to understand uh, the monitoring periods required and uh, follow-up care. Just similar to fracture injuries, uh, luxations require timely uh, diagnosis and treatment to improve and optimize the chance of a successful outcome, which is uh, tooth retention. The etiology is similar to the fracture injuries really, so please check the first clip in the uh, series uh, to recap. It will be the first one in fracture injuries, uh, the infractions. This week, we will uh, go over luxation injuries. They include concussions, subluxation, extrusive luxation or extrusions, uh, lateral luxation, intrusive luxations or intrusions, and avulsions. We will start with concussions uh, today. Concussion is an injury that involves very mild stretching or crushing, so it could be in, inwards or outwards uh, force of the tooth uh, and the overall supporting structures. The, basically the PDL and whatever the PDL and the cementum are attached to. The clinical findings include tenderness to touch, no mobility, uh, and that's very important. You know, tooth should be you know, rock solid with physiologic mobility only, because if there is mobility, it would be something else. Um, no displacement, no change in bite, positive to sensibility testing. Um, and everything should, apart from a bit of tenderness, everything should you know, look the same as before. Um, don't worry too much about sensibility testing on presentation. Uh, you can, you know, in fact, delay this until the review. Um, and be aware of the fact that, you know, despite the fact that a tooth may have um, concussed, uh, sorry, con uh, concussion injury, and maybe concussed, um, you may have a combined fracture injury too. Um, so it is not uh, one or the other. You know, sometimes, you know, you, you know, see both of them at the same time. Also look at everything else, you know, soft tissue injuries and so on and so forth. Um, so these things are not unheard of. So you record um, everything, examine everything thoroughly and systematically to come up with a diagnosis. The radiographic examination will really be unremarkable. It should be nothing out of uh, ordinary. Um, we just explained this, uh, that sensibility testing is not that reliable immediately post-trauma, so you can delay it until the next appointment. Uh, then you can do your baseline there and then monitor it from then on. In both dentitions, you just reassure the patient and parents, uh, advise a soft diet for a couple of weeks and encourage them to brush as they would normally do. If the tooth uh, gets discolored soon after the injury, and it's not really uncommon, uh, there's so many of these teeth may get discolored, so you might just you know, uh, advise them and reassure them in advance. And it doesn't matter, just reassure them. Um, and you know, for the first three months of injury, you know, it happens, it's not a problem. Monitor, but do not start root canal treatment just because a tooth has gone discolored within three months of an injury. Um, you really need to have a two clear cut sign of not just pulpal necrosis, but also 
infection before you even think about a di pulpal diagnosis uh, of um, necrosis and infection and the root canal treatment. Otherwise, wait and see. Uh, follow up as per schedule dental review, uh, whatever is appropriate for that particular patient of yours. Uh, is it you know three months, four, six, twelve? Just a normal dental review, you know, to be carried out. What I always do is to get them to come back the following week, uh, you know, just to have a chat to see if everything is fine, if everything's changed, reassure them again, and it's it's a, you know you develop a good report as well with with your patient. On a review, uh, check pulpal status and you know, monitor uh, for a good you know, year uh, after uh, your uh, session of pulpal um, testing. To sum up, for concussion, be assured the patient, uh, we don't need to do any splinting and you don't need to do any root canal treatment unless on your review, you have two clear cut signs of pulpal necrosis and infection. So it's easy, easy in a way. Okay. That's all for today. Uh, thanks again for watching this clip. Tomorrow we will cover subluxations uh, and then we will take it uh, from there for the rest of the week. Take care, stay safe, and don't forget to visit Dental Trauma UK website, and especially the members section. And come back tomorrow for another clip. Thank you, bye for now.